In this video, we will define two forms of a quadratic function and show how we can go from one form to the other form. And the two forms we will define are the standard form and vertex form of a quadratic function. So we define a quadratic function to be a function that can be written in the form p of x, which is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are real numbers with a not equal to zero. And this form is called the standard form of a quadratic function. And you'll recall we talked about quadratic equations back in section three, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So hopefully this seems familiar to you. Now the form p of x, which is equal to a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k for real numbers a, h, and k, and a not equal to zero is called the vertex form of a quadratic function. And we saw those in this introductory video that I just did because this is a transformation of the graph of y equals x squared. And it's called the vertex form because the h and k can actually tell us the vertex just by sight, right? We, because of the rules of transformations, we know what the vertex would be. So our question will be, how can we go from the standard form to the vertex form? And remember we did this back in section three when we were talking about quadratic equations and different methods to solve them. One of them was the method of completing the square. That is if we could write this trinomial in some way as a perfect square trinomial, we can write it as a binomial squared. The trick to doing that was completing the square. Recall that if we had something of the form x squared plus bx, to determine the number that completes the square, we have to take half of b and square it. So that is b divided by two quantity squared gives us a number that will complete the square to make a perfect square trinomial. So in this example, we want to write each quadratic function in vertex form by completing the square. Example A, we have the function p of x, which is equal to x squared minus 6x minus 10. I want you to think of the steps that we had to use for solving quadratic equations by completing the square. We will apply those in a very similar way in this process we don't have this equal to zero by any means, but what we're going to do is treat it like an equation and what we do to one side, we will do to the other. The first step in completing the square, we have to remove the constant. And so this negative 10 needs to be removed from the right side. And we can do that by adding 10 to each side. This gives us p of x plus 10 is equal to x squared minus 6x. And then remember that we have to now think about what number completes the square. And just as in solving an equation by completing the square, whatever number we add to one side, we have to add to both sides. So we have, have to take half of the negative 6 and square it which would give us negative three squared or nine. So we will have to add nine to each side to complete the square. On the left, we can now simplify. We get p of x plus 19 is equal to, on the right, we can rewrite this x squared minus six x plus nine as a perfect square in factored form, which is x minus three quantity squared. Now we can rewrite to solve for p of x by subtracting 19. Therefore we get p of x equals x minus three quantity squared minus 19. Now if you wanted to confirm your work on the graphing calculator, you could enter the original function in standard form enter your answer in vertex form and see if the graphs align. If they do, then you did your work correctly. But understand, this is telling us that this 
graph is actually the graph of the basic quadratic function shifted right three units and down 19. And we will talk about in the next objective how to identify the vertex, even though hopefully you already see what that would be. Part B is p of x equals x squared plus 8x. So in this form, we don't have any constant that we need to remove. So we just need to think about what number will complete the square. And so to complete the square, we will have to take half of the 8 and then square it, which is 4 squared or 16. We will add 16 to each side. This gives us p of x plus 16 equals x squared plus 8x plus 16. We can rewrite the right-hand side in factored form. We have p of x plus 16 equals, well, x squared plus 8x plus 16 factors as x plus 4 quantity squared. So our last step is to subtract 16 from each side to get p of x equals x plus 4 quantity squared minus 16. So this function has a graph that is the graph of y equals x squared shifted left 4 and down 16. Again, you can confirm on your graphing calculator. The next example is p of x equals 3x squared minus 3x minus 18. This one's a little bit more involved. Recall that to complete the square, we have to have a coefficient of 1 on the squared term. If we don't, in the process of solving the quadratic equation, we had to divide each side by that coefficient, and that is the same process we will apply here. It's going to look a little bit different because we don't have a number that this expression is equal to. We have p of x. And so when we divide each side by 3, we actually will get p of x divided by 3 is equal to, well, 3x squared divided by 3 is just x squared, minus 3x divided by 3 is minus x, and minus 18 divided by 3 is minus 6. Now we need to remove the constant. We can do that by adding. So we get p of x divided by 3 plus 6, and I'm going to leave a space because we have to complete the square in just a moment. That is equal to x squared minus x. To complete the square, we have to take half of the coefficient of x. So this one's going to be a little uglier. Half of negative 1 is just negative 1 half. And when we square it, we get a positive 1 fourth. We need to add 1 fourth to each side. On the left, we have p of x divided by 3 plus, and now we need to combine the 6 plus 1 fourth. Well, 6, if you recall, is really 24 fourths plus 1 fourth, and that is 25 fourths. Therefore, we have p of x divided by 3 plus 25 fourths is equal to x and then minus the number we just squared, 1 half. So now our goal is just to solve this or write this equation for p of x. We have to first subtract the 25 fourths, so we get p of x divided by 3 is equal to x minus 1 half quantity squared minus the 25 fourths. And then to solve for p of x, we have to get rid of the division by 3, which means we multiply each side by 3, which means we're going to distribute to get p of x equals 3 times the x minus 1 half squared and then minus 3 times 25 fourths. Well, 3 times 25 fourths, we can multiply the numerators to get 75 divided by 1 times 4 or 4. So minus 75 fourths. 
This one was very tricky. So we first had to divide each side by 3. Then we took half of the coefficient of x and squared it. This made it a little tedious because we had a fraction, but the steps were the same. Then we combined the like terms on the left, wrote the x squared minus x plus 1 fourth as a binomial squared, and then worked to solve for p of x.